Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build an AI agent that can search through your meeting notes or summaries and create tasks for you based on the action items that come up in your meetings. And all of this is gonna be using a super easy to use chatbot with an interface. I am seriously using this thing every single day now to manage my life because it saves me a ton of time. Most of my tasks come up in meetings and so this just keeps things really organized for me. And this AI agent is actually gonna be an extension of the RAG implementation in the last AI agents masterclass video. That implementation, which by the way, you don't have to see the video for to get a lot out of what I'm about to show you, was a good implementation, but it was just a start. There were a couple of key flaws with it. The first flaw being that this RAG implementation, it always used RAG. No matter what the user prompt was, it would go and search through the documents because it was assuming that you were always just asking a question about the documents. But in a real world scenario, we want an AI agent that will intelligently determine if it needs to go out and search through the documents or if it can answer the user question right away. And so that is what we're going to be implementing. The second big problem is that that previous RAG implementation, it was just RAG. It wasn't doing anything else with other tools interacting with other APIs like Asana, which is what we're going to be doing here to make the whole AI agent that I mentioned at the start of the video. And the very last problem is that we loaded the vector database into memory and we loaded the documents into the database every single time we ran the chatbot, which is really inefficient. I'm gonna show you how to make a vector database stored locally on your computer, and then we don't have to load the documents into it every single time we run our script. So all these things are gonna to come together for us to create a really powerful AI agent that can manage our tasks for us based on all of the action items that come up in our meetings. So let's dive into this in just like five minutes and then we'll test it out. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create our local vector database and load all of our documents in it. And so the documents that I'm gonna be using for the vector database are in this meeting notes folder, which is going to be in my GitHub repo that I linked to in the description of this video. We got some PDF and text documents here, which are just fake meeting notes that I use GPT to produce. These are the same meeting notes that I had in my last AI agents masterclass video where I gave the introduction to RAG, which by the way, if you don't understand RAG at a, on a basic level, I would definitely recommend checking out that video and coming back here and continuing with this. But anyway, those are our meeting notes. That's what we're gonna be using for all the testing with RAG here. When we create this vector database and load the documents, then we'll run our AI agent, which will have that available now. It'll load the vector database with the documents already in it and use that to search when necessary. And so with that, we'll close out of this and then start implementing our script to create the vector database and load the documents. So the first thing we're going to do is import the packages that we need, which is pretty much just a bunch of things from Langchain because Langchain is gonna help us with our embedding function. It's gonna help us with Chroma, which is our vector database, and it's gonna help us load these documents and split them into chunks as well. And so with that, we're gonna also load our environment variables because the one value that we have as an environment variable for this script is the directory that we want to use to load all the documents from. And so that's just gonna to default to the meeting notes directory that I just showed you with the two PDF documents and the three text documents. And then we're gonna define our function to load the documents. So given a directory, it's going to use the directory loader from Langchain to load all the documents in that folder. And so with this directory loader, we can do PDF documents, we can do text documents, we can do even do other documents like HTML, Markdown, Word documents. There are also a lot of other types of document loaders in Langchain if you want to have something more custom for your own types of file formats or ones that might not be supported by the directory loader. So this is just the most convenient one for this use case, but Langchain provides a lot. So no matter what kind of documents you wanna have in your RAG implementation, you can do it with Langchain. Next thing we're gonna do is split these documents into chunks. There are a lot of ways to chunk, but as a simple one here, I'm just chunking based on 1000 characters per chunk. So if a document is 3000 characters, it'll be split into three chunks. And that way we don't have to return the entire document to the large language model when it picks out something uh, from that document in the vector database when it's matching with a user search. And so then with that, we're just going to return the documents here. And now we're in our main function, we're going to get the documents by calling this function with the rag directory creating the embedding function using an open source hugging face embedding model. And then we're going to instantiate Chroma and save it all to the Chroma DB folder. And so then once you run this script, this is literally it, this is the script. Once you run it, 
you're going to have a chroma db folder that has a sql light file as well as a folder with a lot of other stuff in it and so once you run it and get this you know that you are good to go now the ai agent can load this chroma db instance and not have to load the documents again because it is all stored here locally on your computer next we get to actually implement rag into our ai agent so not only will it be able to do things in asana for us it will also be able to search through documents for us and so i'm going to go over to this script here and we'll go ahead and implement RAG. So what we have right here is the Asana agent that we've already been building as a part of the AI agents masterclass series. So I have all my tools here for interacting with Asana, doing things like creating projects and updating tasks. I have the mapping of all these tools, which we then bind into our chat object, which is either OpenAI or Anthropic, a model from one of those two companies. We stream the response, handle any tool calls, and then the main function here, we have our Streamlit UI defined so we can neatly interact with our chatbot to do things in Asana for us. And so now I'm going to go back up to the top and we're going to enhance this thing with RAG so it can work with our documents just like it can work with Asana and it'll intelligently decide what it needs to do with both of those. And so the first thing we're going to do is import all the packages from Langchain that we need to interact with our vector database. And then we're going to create a function here to get our chroma instance and in this case we don't even have to do anything with a specific folder because we're just going to load that vector database that already has the documents loaded from this other script that we made right here so you want to run this first and then you can run the agent so within this function here we're going to create our embedding function instance using the same model that we used when we loaded the documents and so then when we instantiate chroma we're going to point to that same place that we saved the chroma database that vector database and then pass in the embedding function as well and that is literally it and now we can just get an instance and call it db this function is so simple that is all we have to do to load in the vector database now because we don't have to redo things with the documents like we did in the last implementation in the previous ai agents masterclass video so next up what we're going to do is we're going to create a function which is going to be a tool to query documents. And so just like our Asana tools, we're going to have a doc string here that tells the large language model how to use this function, when to use it, and what the arguments are. And so it uses rag to query documents for information, gives an example call, the args is just the question, and then returns a bunch of text that closestly matches what the user asked in the latest prompt. And so here we're going to do a similarity search with our Chroma instance and return the top three documents that match using cosine similarity. And then we're going to format these documents and return it. And that is literally it. We have now defined a tool that gives a large language model the power to search through our meeting notes. And so now we just have to add it to the mapping and boom, that is it. Now, since we have our tools created dynamically based on the mapping, this tool is now a part of our AI agents. Now we can go ahead and test this thing out and see if we can get meeting notes and create tasks from the action items. All right, so here we are in the Streamlit UI in my browser that I kicked off simply with the command Streamlit run and then the name of my Python script. And so I'm gonna start with a very basic question here that I know there's an answer to in one of my five documents that I have loaded in my vector data. Database. So let's say you remember Emily was talking about the wellness program, but you don't remember exactly what's included. You could ask the LLM just like I'm doing here. And sure enough, Emily proposed that we have yoga sessions and mental health resources as a part of the wellness program. And I know because I read through the documents that this is the correct answer, which is beautiful. So the rag part is working perfectly. Now, here's the wonderful connection that we can make that makes this AI agent truly powerful. We can take this answer from RAG, and now we can create tasks in Asana based on it. And so I can say, okay, great. Now create a new uh, project in Asana called a wellness program and make both of these a task. So it's a very complicated request and it's using some information that it retrieved from the documents for us. And if we wanted to, we could even just make it one single prompt where it's like get information from the wellness program that Emily proposed and then turn that into the tasks with this new project. So it wouldn't even have to do the rag and then we tell it to make a task. So that is how powerful it can be. I just wanted to kind of play it out here in a little bit more detail. And sure enough, the wellness program has been created in Asana with these two tasks. So now I'm going to switch over to Asana. Let's see if this actually works. So, yep, sure enough, we got a new project called wellness program. Then I click into this. And yep, mental health resources and yoga sessions, both due today. That is beautiful. We didn't give a due date, so it just chose today, but that is wonderful. 
It was so easy to not have to go into the documents and search and find that specific part, especially if the meeting notes are long, and then go over to Asana and copy those things over. This saves a bit of time, but that's going to add up from all the meetings and all the tasks that you have because we're all busy people and there's a lot on our plates. So that is wonderful. Another really cool thing that I want to mention is even if it doesn't save you an hour every meeting, because it doesn't take that long to get action items from a meeting manually, it's still going to keep you more organized because it's going to reduce the friction it takes you to go back through meeting notes and pull out the action items. A lot of, a lot of time we'll neglect to do that just because it's annoying. And so using an AI agent to do this kind of grunt work for us is a huge plus because the organization that it provides us is going to actually save us more time in the long run, keeping us efficient and dropping the ball in the least amount of things compared to the time it saves and that initial just pulling the action items from the meeting. So yeah, this thing is just so cool. I'm, I'm using it all the time now. I hope that you could find it useful as well to help you manage your life. If you did, I hope that you will also stick around because I'm going to show you how to extend this into the cloud as well so that the documents can be in the Google Drive, the vector database doesn't have to be locally, and we can really make this a production application. So if you're looking forward to that, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.